back to New Vegas, and I kind of wanted to do something a little slightly different tonight. And by slightly different, I mean, um... I kind of wanted... Okay, I kind of wanted a little bit of a challenge. And by a little bit of a challenge... We were listening to the Sierra Ma the Sierra Mojave music radio before, right? Or no, we were listening to the Sierra Madre broadcast. Mandy the Angel. Mandy the Angel. <laughs> um, we. That, got into 181 follows. There you go, Toasty. Sure See? To thank the you wonderful viewer who joined our Twitch assemblage. You know, Toasty, sometimes you're on point and sometimes you're really lagging behind, uh, which is fine. That It's allowed to happen that way. Thank you, Mandy, for tuning into the Sandwich Experience tonight. You unfortunately missed uh, our previous segment where I made and ate... Actually, I didn't even finish the sandwich. I made and ate a sandwich. Oh, is he just trying to get people with, like, a, a razor blade? Just a straight razor. Damn. Well, that's not gonna happen. But you did just miss our previous segment in which we, um, made it and ate a sandwich. We'll be waiting. Well, we can try out what's at the Sierra Madre. It's at an abandoned Brotherhood of Steel bunker that we haven't been to. That's fine. Mandy, hello. Thank you for, again, being here today. We are playing New Vegas, and I'm challenging myself. Uh, I have a lot of companions, and I'm going to not have them follow me in, I hope, I think, over into the Sierra Madre. We'll see how this mod's going to work. Um... But we're going to do that now. I'm level 16. I think I'm good enough for it. The game's on very hard, so if not, I guess I'm going to find out soon. Um, which is all I could say about it. What's this random robo brain? Scanning. Low, low, medium, neutral, dead. Oh, Veronica! What a punch! It did a flip and landed back on its wheels, dude! Look how cool Veronica is. I'm glad we got her last time. Last time we played this was uh, the end of, of Pride Month, actually, if I remember properly. But, whether or not Pride Month is on the table. Pride Month should always be on the table. We love Pride Month over here at the Sandwiched Experience. We love our LGBTQ friends. Man, Veronica, you're just... Take those just in case. You're just murdering guys, Veronica. Like... I've always considered you to be a useful companion, but like, what is this guy doing? What was that guy actually doing? Whatever. Yes, we are going to visit your bro- well, not your brotherhood, you'll see. There is a legend of a place called the Sierra Madre Casino. And the legend goes that when it was set to first open, it was the day that the bombs fell. Right? Right. And then, because of the radiation and something in the area, there was this odd gas, this odd fog, that basically corroded the, the skin and anybody's, like, flesh up upon, upon, like, contact with it. So, oh, this is just Young's too. She, grenade? 
These are just young Kazadors too. These aren't even big ones. Oh, I'm so poisoned. That's right. What is... Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, what the f- I don't remember what I was gonna say anymore. There's a dead guy. He's got a machete. We're gonna do the Sierra Madre. They'll give us a bit more of the backstory when we actually get into it, but... There seems to be the promise of riches, pre-war riches, hidden behind the doors of this really off-limits and kind of incredibly dangerous structure. I mean, if it wasn't off-limits and highly dangerous, like, you could- you, you'd- you'd think that there wouldn't be something incredible inside of it. Um... There is one thing I would like to talk about in relation to this DLC before we actually play it, because this is the first DLC that came out for Fallout New Vegas. We're doing this in uh, the suggested level order that they were giving. Um, we're gonna... Thought, yeah, I was gonna say I thought these were legionaries, not MCR. Reload your gun, reload your gun, reload your gun, thank you. Had enough? Where? Oh, under me. Okay, this is gonna be difficult, and I know this is gonna be difficult, Sierra Madre, and that's important. The Sierra Madre has a... What, arcade? Uh, has a, um... Dinner. A bit of a dinner. Nave Dreamer, thank you for tuning into the Sandwich Experience! See how close I came to death? Close to Nelson. Here we go. Any closer, I'm shooting any legionary I see. Hope that's not a problem. No, it's never gonna be a problem. That is a solution, Boone. Damn right. You and I, we're just a couple of problem solvers. Big agree, Boone. Big agree. Um... So with the Sierra Madre, there is a bit of a conceit that comes with it that you don't know this until you get into it, but, uh... He was still alive. I don't think I've ever seen that before. He was still alive. That's a gun. It looks like a... An auto rifle that I'm taking from this guy. Yeah, that guy was alive, yet not anymore. Nave Dreamer, thank you for tuning in. Oh god! I would I I would refer to you by name if that was fine. I could do that. I just want to make sure that it's fine that I do first. Um, but I'm glad you're tuned in. We're gonna be doing the first DLC for New Vegas. And as I was continually trying to say, there's a conceit that comes with this. Okay, uh... Hi, Cassie. Hope you're doing okay. I'm glad to see you. Um... You and Michael both popped in, and I'm very happy about that. So... There's an elephant in the room relating to this DLC. And a lot of people don't like it. I think a lot of people don't like it for relatively valid reasons, but I think that they especially don't like it <clears throat> because, well, you'll see when we get in there. This is, <laughs> Sandwich out here doxing people. Split, you don't want to know what information I got on you, dude. Am I lying? I guess you'll never find out. Your government name is Split, yeah. Exactly. So, 
I know I keep saying, oh, conceit with this, the conceit with this, but it really is a conceit with this. People don't like this DLC. And I was firmly in the camp. Yeah, hang on. I am firmly I was firmly in the camp of not really liking this DLC. And now I'm thinking of it differently. For reasons I will get into when we um when we start it. I don't know how this is going to work with the companions. I am going to tell them to wait because I don't know if this mod will break that. I can't talk to you, so I guess that's fine. Dead money takes you to an extremely dangerous area of the Mojave Wasteland, a one-way journey until your business at the Sierra Madre is finished. In normal mode, you'll encounter new traps, enemies, and new companions whose lives are tied to yours. In hardcore, you'll be fighting the environment as well, a toxic city that erodes health over time. Companions are more vulnerable, and so are you. Dead money is recommended for experienced couriers, level 20 plus. If you're up to which, I'm only 16, I thought it was 15 for this. If you're up to the challenge, Continue on. The Sierra Madre Grand Opening awaits and has been for 200 years. The Sierra Ma the Sierra Madre. A casino buried. Buried. This deal say broke you? I thought the lowest was Honest Hearts. I don't know. Well, I want to do Honest Hearts second to last on DLC because it has um, A, one of my favorite NPCs of all time in this game, and B, I want to get lame on it because lame's going to have a lot to say as well as me uh, when it actually comes to playing the game. But the lowest level DLC was Honest Hearts? It might be. It, it might be. I'm not sure. We'll unlock this door. Here's a drop box. Zap. <laughs> Dean's Electronics. This is one of the only only places on the map in order to get into the Dean's Electronics. A vending machine. This is an unusual looking crafting station. As you approach, lines of tiny holographic items appear in the dispensing tray. Wireframe schematics and lists of consumables the machine can assemble and package for the consumer. There's a slot on the side for a Sierra Madre symbol. The slot does not look like it's part of the original design. Isn't there some messed up stuff regarding indigenous people in Dead Money? Not in Dead Money, in Honest Hearts. Uh, we'll get into the treatment of the indigenous, uh... The indigenous, uh, people in Honest Hearts when we actually get to Honest Hearts. Which is also why I want to get Lame in here, because Lame knows, uh, more about that stuff. Or at least can offer a different perspective in a different way than I can that I will always appreciate. Um, I just want to, I know this is nothing. I can never not scavenge things. That's a T-45 power hel power armor helmet. I could wear that. Terminal locked, contact an administrator. Okay. That is the symbol of the Brotherhood of Steel. What are you, Roger Rabbit? Huh? Oh, baby. Whoa. Oh, the gas. Oh, the gas. I've been tricked. I've been tricked. Sometimes I think about like, well, I can't go back up there. Sometimes I think about something you've heard of the sierra madre casino we all have the legend the curses foolishness about it lying in the middle of the city of the dead buried beneath a blood red cloud a bright 
shining monument luring treasure hunters to their doom. The world's most famous stars and entertainers were invited to its grand opening. An invitation was a sign of exclusiveness. The opening was supposed to symbolize a road to a brighter future. Not just for the world, but for all who came to its doors. A chance for anyone to begin again. Except the Sierra Madre never, never opened. opened. The war froze it in time. Like a big flash bulb going off. The grand opening. One big ending of humanity. It's still out there. In the wastes. Preserved. Just waiting for someone to crack it open. But getting to it. That's not the hard part. No, it's not. It's letting go. Dead Money is a DLC about sunk cost fallacy. Are you listening? Good. From now on, when I talk, listen and follow my instructions. Play stupid. Play clever. Make the mistake of saying no. That collar on your neck will go off and take your head with it. Collar? What are you talking about? I... I just woke up here. It's like that fit boy on your wrist. Except filled with explosives. A little radio of the old world. Just need it some too. Do what I say. And the caller will go off. Refuse? Try and run? Disobey me? I'll kill you and find someone else. There's no escape from here until I let you go. The sooner you accept your situation, the better. So a man lures me to a bunker underground, then gasses me and says, you are going to help me or else I'm going to kill you. Which is where this DLC starts. Sometimes I think about like when people and what people think old and ancient treasure is. Sometimes you're not thinking it. Sometimes it's salt that was the universal preservative. Correct. Sometimes it's a plant with medicinal properties. Correct. 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 Steel. It's a big one. Steel has their very own brotherhood. Absolutely. Steel has their very own brotherhood. Um, eventually going to try to play New Vegas by starting for the ton of mods. Have fun with that. Four is fine. Girl boss gate gas like no girl boss gatekeep. There was never a third one. They are lying to you. So this guy wakes me up. What is what does he want? That structure you see above the fountain, the Sierra Madre Casino. You need to break inside. Ah, uh, heist. Too many years in the making. A heist. Get inside, avoid its traps. You'll need to gather a team. A team. I found one cannot do it alone. How am I going to have a team if I'm the only person that you captured in this? I don't have my companions, dude. Gaslight, gas, keep gas boss. <laughs> the hunter of IBS. Very good steal. So this guy wants me to run a heist out of somewhere that people have never been able to get in and then escape from. And the reason that they're not able to escape from it is because they get in and find whatever they're looking for and don't want to let it go because they put all of their stuff, all of their effort, all of their time, all of their energy, all their money into getting there. And you don't want to leave empty handed, do you? It's a chase. It's the gamble. Dead money, aka Oceans 1. This is like Oceans 22, 80, whatever. But I need other people to pull off this heist? Around the middle of three other callers like yours. Caller 8, 12, and 14. Find all three and get them here to the farm. Then we'll talk more. And should you get any ideas about killing each other and taking the treasure of the Sierra Madre for yourself, a warning. All your callers are living. One of you dies, you all die. If that's what it takes to make you cooperate, so be it.
Why would you do that? Because in some respects, breaking into the Sierra Madre is easier than breaking human instinct. Greed. The villa is filled with corpses. <clears throat> some killed by the dangers here, some by me. I do get the hollow rifle. Others turned on each other. Once they realized the Sierra Madre could be theirs, they cared nothing for their freedom, their survival, or each other. But when you're in the Sierra Madre and you don't want it to be where you are and you're stuck here, you still have to do what he says. Christine? Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about Christine later. Christine rocks. Are they all dead? This guy who's seen this happen again and again and again and again and again. How many people did he bring here? Too many. many. Too many. <clears throat> and his quarantine measures, its hazards, have claimed many. Failures upon failures. You think I wanted to place collars on you to ensure compliance? No. If robots could have done this, I would have sent them. The Sierra Madre is a complicated lock. Cracking it open requires human hands. And where is my stuff? The Sierra Madre has many defenses, means of screening guests for illicit or dangerous items. Your arrival here, weaponless, was not my intention. The casino not my intention. Anything with even a trace of radioactivity. Traces of unknown substances and returns it home. The bunker. The process is automated and the casino itself has other similar services. I was unable to find a workaround except to send others in as tools. As tools. I have not left you defenseless. And the Sierra Madre's security, in some respects, can help you if you are resourceful enough. What do you mean by that? The old world. Search, hunt, craft what you can from what you find. The trash of the pre-war era can keep you alive. Food, knives, war, use them. Even the villa's toxins and the residue. He sounds hungry. He sounds hungry, almost. Like, his mouth is watering as he is making you do this stuff. Because he knows this might be the most capable person I've ever brought to here. This might be my chance. And I'm sure he's already salivating at the thought of you solving this problem for him to get into the Sierra Madre, the mystical, the magical, the unknown. To take that big gamble, to bet it all. And win, finally. But can it be? What is his rifle? It was a hollow rifle, a weapon I constructed when I arrived. I have since made superior models and modifications. For now, that tool will have to do until you find other weapons. And I suggest you do. The hollow rifle's ammo is limited. Still, yes, it is. 
I fashioned it from the holograms of the villa and used it against the villas. Living inhabitants. Living inhabitants? There's people that live here? Yes. Inhabitants. Avoid them if you can. They are difficult to kill. Whatever has created them. Bullets, explosions, energy. It can make them inert for a time. Then they seem to crawl back up and restore them. Perhaps... Let's turn the music down a little bit. I, oh, okay, hold on. You're talking about people that were changed by a cloud. What is the cloud? The cloud is what blankets the sky here. You may smell it in the air. Copper and sulfur. Burns the lungs and seeps into the skin. The longer you are here, As for its origins, the worse off you will be. Pre-war industrial pollutants. Something in the Sierra Madre structure. It is unique across the wasteland. It is. It's the only place in the entire wasteland that looks and acts like this. Will exposure kill me? The air here is lethal only if you went to concentrate in pockets of the cloud. Too long inside one, you'll die. So be careful when you step there. I've seen some survive concentration of the cloud for short periods of time, if healthy enough. Others... We're too weak. Read, read too weak. Suits. There is no protection against it. It decays all it touches. I found fighting it useless. This cloud is deadly. No matter what you do, no matter what you go into it with, it is adapted. It is basically its own organism. It acts kind of like a white blood cell system. Destroying the pathogens, the bacteria, the problems that come in. Because the Sierra Madre, even though it is the most dead environment in the Mojave, is still very, very much alive. Anywhere sheltered from the cloud. Inside buildings, tunnels. Any place not exposed to the outside air. Mm-hmm. Anything the cloud has touched has preserved it one way or another. But only the holograms in the villa truly remain. What holograms? Ghosts. They fill the villa. More than the casino. Much more. Ghosts? They carry out the functions the dead once did. They cannot be harmed. They only perform the same road tasks until their power dies. Oh, like actual holograms. They are Security holograms, the ones with the silhouettes of the Arm of Sierra Madre guards. Why? Most holograms perform specific functions. The security holograms, ever since the bombs fell, now perform their function. So it's been doing this for the longest time. They are immune to guns, weapons, EMPs, even energy weapons. Still, they have limitations. Their design limits their field of view, enough to avoid detection. Each has an enemy, destroy or disable it, and they cease to be a threat. Still this, I'm pausing this here, this DLC combines not only the survival horror aspects of Resident Evil, the feast or famine concept of having abundance or not having nearly enough, with the stealth gameplay, of some Metal Gear Solid. Which is why I feel stupid for not liking this before. But I guess we'll see in the structure and how this is put together if it holds up to how I felt about it first and see if it can redeem itself um, in the meantime. I surely hope it does. At least they still work as intended. Other technology here is more of a threat to it. Notably, the villa's radios and speakers. Why are the radios and speakers deadly to me, old man?
Hang on, I'm changing one thing. There we go. Raiders and speakers. Yes, music was intended to be broadcast all over the villa. Over time, however, the radio signal has decayed and emits a different frequency. Speakers and radios interfere with the bomb caller frequency and can trigger the detonators prematurely. It can kill me. It is an unfortunate side effect, one I did not anticipate. I was unable to calibrate the callers to block the signals. So, you'll have, you'll to, have, make have to make it. Great. So they can set off my caller and I can't do anything about it. I love that. Radios and speakers can set off my collar? Yes, but not immediately. <clears throat> You'll hear a beep from your collar's detonator. When you do, step back. Sources. There are damaged speakers and shielded ones. The damaged ones you can destroy at range. Don't get close. You can't switch them off like a radio. Right. The damaged speakers are sparking. Are hard to miss. The casings are resistant to vandalism. Punching or hitting them will not destroy them. How do I destroy them then? Gunshots, energy blasts, even spears thrown with great force can puncture their exterior. Shielded speakers can't be destroyed at all. You will need to avoid them or switch them off via a tremolo. I'll leave the method up to you. Out of the questions. How did I get here? What is this place first? Unfamiliar with the legend of the Sierra Madre? The casino exists. You are one of the few who look upon it. Where you're standing is the villa beneath the casino above. The wreckage. The villa lies in the shadow. How was the sandwich? It was a good sandwich, dear. I still have a little bit of the left. Because I had to walk the dog and I didn't get to finish it. How did I get here? I brought you here. There are mechanisms in place once the traps across the Mojave are sprung. For now, your sole focus should be the Sierra Madre and how to get inside. Until then, you won't leave alive. Is she cute? The sandwich? Yeah. So I find three? No, hold on. What are these vending machines? Assembly stations. Schematics are stored within. Dispensers with unlocked codes. They use the chips scattered around as batteries. Alloys are raw material embedded in the ship. I did not take a picture. They resemble the vending Oops. machines in Mojave, but they are crafting devices of tremendous versatility. Once a multiple convenience, now... Now they are a means of survival. Get more chips? Get more stuff. From the holographic display, the device will assemble them. All right. I can put on social. I'm going to put the clips on social as well. I didn't, I was in the middle of eating it. I didn't take a picture. Plus, I was streaming, and my phone was the camera, so I didn't have my phone to take the picture. So I got to find three people with bomb collars and bring them back here. I downloaded the instructions and markers on your pit boy in case you forget. And yes, I have access to that device on your wrist. He can get into my pit boy. Get the other three here. After that, I'll have more instructions for you. Do this. I'll let you go. I'll let all of you go. So this pre-war technology asshole has access to my pit boy. Great. How am I supposed to find them? Your piece of rock. Trash will help you, I'm sure. It can latch onto the signal of the collars and tune into their frequencies. The bomb collars come with radios embedded in them. You can eavesdrop easily. Eavesdrop? It was part of their design to listen in. They can even screen out white noise from the environment to allow greater monitoring. Okay, that's interesting technology. But who am, who am I gathering? One is a trusted ally. Obedience, caller or no. Although the caller helps. The other two? Well, we'll have to see what the trap's caught on. Okay. Any suggestions for who I should get first? Yes. Caller 8, the FEV reject, the super mutant. He is docile, predictable, and provided he 
things not starting should be easy to commit. I lost contact with him some time ago. Probably after he dragged you here from the trap. Find him. He'll follow you, car or no. He dragged me in here. What's FEV? So you are asking this as somebody who might not have the knowledge of what has created super mutants before. The FEV is a forced evolutionary virus that was pushed onto people by the master, dunked them in tanks of the stuff in order to force them to evolve. All right, I guess it's all I needed to know. Instructions on an audio log to your pip boy in case you can't read. Great. If you forget why you're here, let my voice remind you. If so, the Sierra Madre Casino. I got nothing, right? EM pulse. Dead money jumpsuit. Dead money collar. No healing. I got a bunch of stuff. No ammo. What I do need to do, I think I'm gonna take it down from very hard to hard. Um, I don't want to die immediately, so I'm giving myself at least a sort of fighting chance for the second. This is a survival Horror DLC made for Fallout New Vegas. So if life's worries have weighed you down, if you need an escape from your troubles, MF Doom playing in the background isn't really making it um like easy to feel the tension, but don't worry about it. We'll We'll get there when we get there. That should, I should have a t-shirt that says that, honestly. We'll get there when we get there. Hun, remember that. Re design me a shirt that says we'll get there when we get there. Lemco Mac and Cheese, Instamash, Doctor's Bag. <sighs> Doctor's Bag takes 55. I can only do it the one time. This is a rad roach. Oh, I didn't went to do that. Okay, 420, blaze it. Oh, rifle. Holy shit, I already found a gun. I don't think I've ever been that lucky before. I have three bullets. Great. Thank you for, uh, Cassie for redeeming participation. You got 50. 50 new breads that you got put in your lunch box. This gun is based off of the bar, uh, from World War II. If I, if I believe so. And a hat. Okay. Hey, hey, bud. The flickering hologram stares at you expectantly. Do you have things I could buy? You do. However... Uh... Buying things from this guy is not going to necessarily... You know what? Selling things might be... More important. No caps. What am I wearing? I put a hat on. None of this has... None of this has damage resistance. Okay. I have three bullets for this. And somehow I also have a iBot. So... This portion of this is going to play towards my sensibilities of loving to... Loving to 
Oh my god. Play survival horror games. <sighs> oh, just, I don't care what's in here, just take all of it. Dean security stash. Well, thanks, Dean. And a gun and some stuff. I'm just gonna take everything I get my hands on for now and then I can deal with whatever might or might not be here later. Please walk across the roof. Do not give me issues. Thank you. Jump! Nothing. Oh god, and now I'm down here. And now I'm down here. Did you see that? I don't even know if I'm able to hit guys with this gun properly because of my low strength. You will die if you're greedy. Oh. If so, I only have a save here. Okay. Alright. Like I said, this is going to be survival horror. This is going to be hard. And I'm playing this on hard, and we're going to see how this goes. So, you're supposed to recipe from the night you like the cooking Twitch. I will consider doing more in the future. I did appreciate actually doing it. It was a lot of fun. It feels like something I'm going to have to do on weekends. Um, so that I actually have time to set it up and do the stuff. Because it was quite a lot to get done tonight. But it was a lot of fun. I really appreciated doing the making of the sandwich. So I'll, I'll figure out where I can... Post the recipe to. That's the way out after you break into the Sierra Madre's vault. Try to leave. I'll set off your caller. Yeah, shut up. I don't know if the game told me who this was that I was talking to over the radio, but, um. You go over there. Okay, have a good night, Mom. Everybody say good night, Mom Witch. Everything I can. Only. Uh, Jay Dilla. You'd think would. I didn't kill? Okay. Alright, we're we're back. I'm gonna need to i I'm gonna need to just quick save more often, especially around the Around the nasty old great murderous mist. It's a mix of a number of horror themes and tropes in here in order to give yourself a um, really quite unique experience. Uh, I don't, even though I call this survival horror and a little bit of like stealth gameplay like Metal Gear or something, I don't think I've ever played anything quite like Dead Money before or since. It, like, it's one of a kind, and I think that might be why I don't like it, or didn't like it. Because I don't have anything to compare it to unless it was like Resident Evil 4, and that's a really weird comparison to Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. We take the hot butter, mix it with the ice cream, freeze it up, cool, you can see it on your screen. Put it in your microwave, make it real hot, like a soup or a dip. We call it eat and sit. Very tasty and healthy, too. Granny Cream's Hot Butter Ice Cream. What was I saying? Get... Uh. This... I bought that I accidentally brought into here is gonna be the death of me. I know it is. Okay, down here. 
quick save. Don't forget to save scum. I'm gonna have to save scum. Oh, Celixius! Oh, hold on. Uh, we're playing Fallout New Vegas. Give me one second. Toasty, show them a video real quick. To Toasty, show them. Toasty, show them the video. and make him say, Hey Google, play what Come On Eileen. You can take me home. Brandy. Remember to clean up my poop. I'm here for you. <laughs> yeah! I am the Burger King. In this wonderful... Experience. Mr. Human Sandwich centipede is, is that a sandwich? So, your ingredients are not sandwiches. Be sure to thank the exist. wonderful viewer who joined up. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Toasty. Evidently. Evidently. So, oh, God. No, I'm oh, so God. Shy. God damn it. God damn it. Fuck, there was nobody left. There was nobody left. I'm so sorry that there was nobody left. Selixius, what were you playing? You were playing Minecraft. I hope you enjoy Minecraft. I'm not. I am not a very big Minecraft guy, but I hope that you appreciated and enjoyed what you were playing out of it. I hope it gets you what you need out of your gameplay experience. I'm not a big survival crafty kind of guy. Oh, Jesus. Man, it has been probably literally a decade since I have gone through Dead Money. It is my least played DLC. Um... It, it, it's absolutely my fully, 100% least played DLC that I've ever gotten. Ooh, thrill. Building, hanging out with friends, who could ask for more? Understandable. I don't have anything against survival games, I don't have fun with them. I need, if it's gonna have a survival game, if it's gonna have something like that, it needs structure. Um, I can't just be dropped in the middle of nowhere and told, go, because I'll never come, I'll, I'll never come up with anything to actually do. I'll make a, a farm. I'll make a farm. Dead Money is the worst DLC in, in 3 or New Vegas hands down. Really, worse than in 3 and New, and New Vegas. Don't get why I hate it. Well, we'll see if we can change your the opinion on that, like, overall, because it's not my favorite DLC. I respect it, I don't like it. So, I'm... wondering if we can make ourselves like it, because it is... honestly... a survival horror game, and I should love it. Oh my god, okay, I thought I was out of ammo. No, wait, I also have that other gun. What was worse in three? Uh... DLCs in three were Point Lookout, Brotherhood of Steel, or Broken Steel, uh, Mothership Zeta. The Pit. I think Point Lookout kind of sucks. <laughs> The pit also kind of sucks. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say you say the pit. Operation Anchorage is is the other one. Operation Anchorage and the pit are. Jesus. Yeah, I'll get there when I get there, dude. I have to go and explore. I didn't see that. Uh, oh, there's stim packs in here. There were actually stim packs, and I know I wasted some health doing that. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna reload, bop, 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 and get out. There we go. Point Lookout's awesome. Straight up second best in those two games next to the Old World Blues. Point Lookout is... Uh, 
No, I'm thinking of Operation Anchorage. Port Lookout or uh, Point Lookout is the one that Herbert's in, or not Herbert, or what, uh, whatever his name is. The tree. I'm sorry. I'm focused on this. Point Lookout's actually kind of interesting. Um, maybe if I ever play three, which I never will because I don't like three. Uh, maybe I'll play Point Lookout. Nothing but Point Point Lookout. The tree is in the base game of three? That doesn't sound right. He's a major part of Point Lookout. He should be. And if not, well, I guess I'm just not remembering three very well. But Operation Anchorage and the pit, to clarify, are the ones that I don't like in three. Mother Sibs 8 is fine. It's kind of goofy. Which I guess is also fine. That's a shotgun. I make that. The answer was no, I couldn't make that. And trees in the base game of three. Okay. I don't remember, I guess. Like I said. Hup. Hup. I got the shotgun though. Yeah, the pit, more like the shit, I agree, it's not very good. Um, it does let you eat a baby. Which, if you've never taken the option to eat the baby in the pit, maybe you should. Maybe we should. Get the, get it, get the, get the ammo, thank you. Let me in. Let me in. This door was fake, and I knew this door was fake. Whoa, look, it's it's the map, and you can see some, some, some fog. Yeah, maybe you should eat the baby. I'd eat the baby. I'd eat the baby. Laser pistol. Um, the, what I'm feeling early in this DLC right now is, uh, the tension from, the tension from, uh, not remembering fucking anything, which is great because that'll lead into me getting confused and hopefully things will get clipped and, you know, fun things can happen. Somebody clip that and make me look, you, you clip it and make me look horrendous. The... Ooh. High five. I just got a little bit of a saving grace here. I picked up a caravan shotgun. I should be okay for a little while then. There we go. What else do I got? Just that. Caravan shotgun is 20 gauge. It's not even 12 gauge, so it is going to be doing less damage than a regular shotgun, but we... we stay silly. Ah. Uh. If you can end up crippling one of their limbs, they will stay down. Oh my god! So much like Dead Space, if you... Like, cut their limbs off... You will... Remove them from being a problem. Also, hi there Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal... For being my character's voice. That was some wild damage. There we go, okay. So if you can manage to knock one unconscious and cut its legs off, it will not get back up. Otherwise, they will get back up. I didn't know that for a very long time. And then recently, in doing a little bit of research for this, like just to be like, oh, 
to make sure I kind of know what to do. Oh, yeah, you meet this and do that. You could do what now? So, like, that should save us some time. Activate hologram. I don't know what that's going to do for me. Yes, I do know what that's going to do for me because the holograms distract the ghost people. If I remember correctly. I may be incorrect, but I remember that specifically. Just pick up all this individual money on the ground. I need like a, a Samus tractor beam where I can just go and charge an attack and suck everything up at the same time. What is that bell ringing? Hi, honey. You want to get toy? Want to crab? Or just that? Dinner bell. Oh man. It's all I like. I know what it is, but it's ominous. Five rads. Like, I am buffed, over-leveled, like, in terms of, like, stats and health and all this stuff. I am very over-prepared for this. I'm still probably going to die a bunch of times. Oh, you want your rainbow instead? Hold on. Happy pride. My dog is a rainbow chew toy. She loves it. It's her favorite. She's my little gay baby. Open this gun cabinet. Uh, but it is funny you say it's the, the dinner bell, right? Sarah Madre armor? What is happening? They're giving me too much stuff already. I don't remember getting anywhere near this stuff before. God is what is what is it? it God is good every day. God is good. Alhamdulillah. Grab take open. Sierra Madre chips. Take the tin cans. Tin cans are part of a recipe I'm gonna need later. Oh. Open this up. Hell yeah, I'll open this up. Oh, oh. I have to remember what I am looking for. Turn the noise off. I have to remember what I am looking for. Oh, C4 explosive, interesting. Inventory. Got the weapons of the mines in today, as long as shotguns, the ammo, and have to defend the villa if trouble breaks out. Sinclair is taking the whole situation seriously, even on the way out here. Maybe so, because we're out here. I hate to think of someone got their hands on half the stuff we stored here. Oh, fuck. And have military earners turn the villa into a minefield. Dispensers are up and running. Unlike everywhere else, we've had problems with them. 
few problems with them. I've heard they've been part of some of the World's Fair exhibits and Claire had seen, so contacted the researchers about the dispensers to see if they could use them here. Turns out dispensers do more than supply convenience items. If there's an emergency or threat or com uh, or threat of communist attack, codes can unlock ammo and repair kits for the dispensers. Stored back into the codes in the contraband room just in case. So I can get codes for things that I do need. I just gotta get there first, I guess. Emma. Emma. I could break down a lot of ammo to make new ammo, and I don't want to do that. Puts dog in the cage, hiding downstairs. Puts dog in the cage, hiding downstairs. Take all this stuff. Okay. Uh, slightly nerve-wracking. Let's see. I think I have a... Police pistol. I do. I have a lot of ammo for it, actually. Let me do that. The hollow rifle will be on five. Hollow rifle will be on five. I could do enough damage with my fists and other stuff that actually... I'll still put the knife on six or something. Oh, this is going to be messy. I willingly said, hey, I'm going to play dead money today. I'm going to subject myself to this. I put myself in this situation. You know how people say never put me in a situation? I put myself into this situation. Oh, I would like to sleep. Quick save just in case. Open up that cell door. What do you got in here, homie? Binoculars, 12 gauge ammo, bent in cans. Uh, great. Yeah, the assumption is that they're not going to give me a lot of ammo, but they're gonna gonna give me a lot of cool stuff that I'm gonna want to use. So we'll uh, we'll see how well that gets to go this time. I didn't need that ashtray. Um, let me talk to the super mutant. It's locked. Sinclair visit. Sinclair did the rounds again today. Glad he left his ghostly entourage at the casino. Those walking light shows make me wonder why he's got us on staff when they could blast us in a second. Otherwise, Sinclair runs a tight ship. Good to know in these days and times. Don't know how smart he is trying to make a resort to escape everything in the outside world. But rich guys can make it happen. Even ones that have been hit hard, like Sinclair has. Rich guys can do anything with the right money. Holding report. Nothing to report. My, my pretty, uh, pretty quiet tonight, even from Puesta del Sol. Imagine Morris up at the casino probably has more than enough with the guests coming in tonight. Poor bastard. Set up the radio so I can listen on the gala event when he fires up. I left one out for the prisoners. If Sinclair doesn't want us to be too strict, strict with the guests tonight, I may just toss the key in the holding cage with anyone we pick up and let them unlock the door when they sleep it off. It's inside? Okay. Set up the radio room downstairs to broadcast through speakers. Don't want to miss tonight's performance. The receiver down there is stronger than the desk radios we have. Oh, fuck. Stash some supplies from the evidence room down there to celebrate once my shift is over. Once I figure it... The way I figure it, the rest of the guards will be too busy to check up on me. So is the key in here? Then... Not what I wanted. Downstairs. I have to go downstairs, and that does require a key. Unlock hard. Damn. Disengage contraband room lock. Prohibited items. Sinclair's pro prohibition list is going to be difficult to enforce, and we told him so. Cleaves are getting an automated system that would confiscate items even the slightest bit radioactive or foreign and ship them back to the visitor's source address. Wow. Asked about items already in the villa and he dismissed it. 
Okay. Of course, no sooner than Claire gives his prohibition speech, his pal swings by the same hour asking how hard nosed we were going to be. Told me he couldn't guarantee he'd keep us supplied if I didn't treat his friends with the same respect. Prick. Security system installation. Secure. Sinclair installed a new security system for visitors coming into and out of the villa. He doesn't seem to care too much about what they do when they're inside. Only we confiscate any personal devices that can be dangerous or foreign. Okay. And make sure we know who enters and who leaves. Asked him again about watching the construction crews. He said it was a villa matter. Great, that means the prick runs the show. As long as there are no more accidents amongst the crews, that's what he cared about. Barely took my flask out of the desk before he shows up. He gets that disapproving look when he sees the hard stuff. Hearing the entire history of the Sierra Madre, huh? Disengage the lock. Metal spoon. Chemex. Four frag grenades, some buff out. 357 rounds I can buy, some super stim packs, brass knuckles, mantats, another automatic rifle, more ammo. That's it. <coughs> not. Not a lot of ammo. Let's try downstairs then. Get away while you can before he comes back. Before who comes back? Before who comes back, dog? Uh, dude, dog, dog. Who's who, dog? Who's coming back? Activate terminal. All right. Vending machine installation. Oversaw the street side vending machines installation today, all working mostly because the casino crew was running the show. Finally complained to the chief about the machines. Feels like a company store. Correct. We only get a few casino chips with the paycheck. We can barely buy anything. Man, oh man. The chief says he's not sure the chips were Sinclair's idea, only if we had any problems with the machines. Let him know immediately. Search and seizure. After another discussion with the Puesta del Sol crew, told Chief it'd be difficult to enforce a prohibition list, let alone the searches. Chief had the gala on his brain, said Sinclair put construction in the villa more important than patting down the construction crews for liquor and cams as long as it didn't hurt anybody or each other. <sighs> a little hot under the collar. Chief did too and told me to walk it off. This whole thing stinks. Chief's barely got a, a time for me, and now Sinclair is turning a blind eye to things the villa's because his friend's running the show? No more parking tickets. One good thing about this assignment, no more po writing parking tickets. Sinclair is laid out to the streets so narrow, cars can't even come into the villa. Resources being what they are, he may not want folks to waste gas coming down here. Cuts down on traffic noise, too. Chief says it's more than that, says Sinclair wanted the villa to be... reclusive. As long as I don't have to worry about double parking snobs or Chrysler's gas hogs clogging the villa, I could care less. Wonder how he expects folks to get here, though. Seems extreme, even for <coughs> privacy. Hey, honey. I said I would like you to not bark at me. Little miss. Can you move, dude? Empty whiskey bottle. Sierra Madre chips. See, like, you just gotta, like... You take as much as you can at the beginning until you get some guns, and then you decide what you do and don't continuously need. I don't think I need cups and trash. So I can... Decide to dump those where I can. 
More chips. Vacuum cleaner. Do they let you make the rocket launcher in here? I don't remember. And even if I could, I... Don't think I know how to do it. Just thinking, I'm not sure if I do know how to do it. Okay, in here... I don't remember where enemies are. Richard knows what that means. But what the fuck does that mean? Right? Take my voice to the dog? Sure thing, dude. Not listen. Dog wants out. Dog is hungry. I don't have the key. Dog. Dog, back in the cage. What have we here? You weren't who I was expecting. I'm disappointed. Still. Even if you aren't my intended guest, you take direction. Good. You can't have been an idiot to figure out how to release me from my cage. Or perhaps you are, with that leash on your arm, and the one around your neck. With our collars and manacles, why, we may as well be kin. Manacles. What does having a pit boy in the wasteland mean? You are a descendant of a terrible system that has done terrible things to so many people and they slap a piece of technology that weighs as like like it's it's a heavy thing that you have to wear forever, constantly, because it'll provide to you your vitals and important information, and you have this ability that nobody else in the wasteland has. Does having the pit boy make you be a hero? No, because you have your character's agency, you can decide to do whatever you want. You can be good and bad in the karma system, make sure that that aligns properly. But what a pit boy does then is spur you to action. A pit boy says, go. You are not beholden to be a good person, nor are you to use your power for gain. You could if you, you could do either of those things if you're so inclined. But to have a pit boy. 
I think gives you agency. Prior to getting shot in the head in this story, you didn't have agency. You were a courier. And that's all you know. Because that's where your story started. At the end of that previous story, that previous life. Then when you woke up and you were given a pit boy by Doc Mitchell. Well, you decided to go talk to the town and solve their problem and then go to another town and solve their problem. And Do people expect you to save them? I will take a look in a second, dear. Do people expect you to save them because you have a fancy piece of technology on your arm? Are you more likely to listen to the cries of people out in the wasteland because you have this extra piece of technology forever attached to you? And once you have it, you're not going to want to take it off. So why did Doc Mitchell... We didn't get to a story yet. As I always say, it'll come later. Now, you were not beholden when you first started playing this game to go and solve towns' worths of problems. You just needed to find a man and shoot him. If that is your intention. And if your life never happened the way that it did, you never got that pit boy, you probably would have just continued on that path of doing your job, being that NPC. The pit boy, in a way, makes sure that you, except in the case of fucking Fallout 3, the pit, the pit boy makes you the protagonist. Nobody else has one. The people that do are already in a vault or somewhere else or, you know, took them off. A responsibility, that weight that sits on your shoulder, on literally on your, your wrist, the shackle, the manacle that is there for life that way. Is it good? Is it, is it necessary? Is it not a burden? I'd think not because a piece of hardware is beholden to the use and direction of the person. It can be useless to others and if the user, just, user doesn't give a shit, but it may be useful to others in an indirect manner. Technology that can do incredible things for the people of this wasteland is routinely hoarded by the Brotherhood of Steel. Their entire raison d'etre is to hold on to old world tech and keep it forever because nobody else is smart enough to use it. And they would easily do the same thing to your pit boy if they found your corpse somewhere. Or any pit boy had corpse, corpse somewhere. The piece of hardware is beholden to the use and direction of the person. It can be useless to others if the user doesn't give a shit. I guess so. It's useful to others in a direct, indirect manner. But because I got a pit boy, because I... Well, I, the reason I got a pit boy is because the story thrust agency upon me. And in order to have a menu system, that's how they did it. And that's how the series goes. But there is not a falsehood in the concept that a pit boy is one part of a handcuff. To the, possibly to the rest of the world. Greatness is thrust upon you by virtue of the Pip-Boy for personal use of this machine that makes you effectively God. Not, not that it allows you to reset time and do this stuff, but if you... That exists because of the Pip-Boy. That does what it does because of the Pip-Boy, and it's... Giving you the data in order to make the shots and ca calculating your thing and, you know, 
the Pip Boy actively makes you a better fighter, a better person, a better talker, because it's constantly feeding you data. There's no reason not to have one, but there's so few because they are limited to being from the vault projects. And getting one does something to people. Nobody in this world is as helpful as your courier is. Think about that. You traveled from town to town chasing a man to put a bullet in his head who put a bullet in your head. And along the way, if you're playing this playthrough, which you are, you've been helping everybody along the way. You've needed information, sure. For some of these things, you could just talk to somebody and say, no, I really need to know. And they'll point you and you don't have to deal with it, but... You'll be missing out on making the world a better place. Or a worse place, depending on what you're looking for. And that is a very important thing to note. I think. It is a gift and a curse. So what happened to this guy's voice? Because he was a he was a different person a, a bit ago. But we, we, it was a different person before I went on this diatribe about uh, how pit boys are uh, secretly evil. That's not what I said. I'm the voice of reason. I sleep sometimes. Down in the basement. In the cage. Now that I'm awake, Dog goes back in the cage. Dog knows I'm here, but can't do anything about it. I'm his... conscience. Keep him tame. Keep him from hurting us. Doing foolish things. Doing foolish I've been things? I've here for some time. Then you come along and let me out. So, you opened my cage for a reason. Now... I want to know why. This person talks like somebody. Um, think about it like when phones were first brought about. Okay, the concept of telephone as it was. They were useful but sparse. It really depends on the person. The person could have a phone. They could, in the end, prefer to letter, 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 write a letter for communication. You're right. But the phone... Again, the phone isn't a... Better making piece of technology that slaps on your wrist and basically you're already better. Like, it's got the same targeting system stuff in it that, like, high end power armor would. And that's just for weapons, specifically. Like, it does. It does good shit. Receiving it, I think, is, is the impetus. The thing that makes people do more. It's different from buying a phone or receiving a phone as a gift and preferring to write a letter. That is something to solve the same thing twice. Right? Like, you want to communicate with somebody, you can do it through the phone or you could do it with writing a letter. Phones were scarce, you're right. But they didn't vastly improve the life of the people that had them. The Pit Boy does. The Pit Boy is immediately incredibly valuable to that person because of what it can do. The phone's not the same kind of technology. Imagine if I tripped over an alien ray gun in the yard tomorrow. What would I do with that technology? I mean, I would have to call the authorities in order to get it taken away from me and, like, study to do whatever, but that's because I'm that kind of person. I would make sure that that would make to the, the people that could do the best thing that they can with it. I wouldn't just pick it up and shoot people, right? Like, it's not like that. In this world that exists in this... Being a gunfighter and shooting people first is, in a lot of parts of the life, absolutely necessary. 
when we did our D and D campaign that involved these concepts in Fallout, what it would mean that you can't miss in like if you absolutely had one hundred percent accuracy, no matter what you did, like you shot a bullet in the opposite direction and it bounced off of a rock because uh, this is how physics worked and it killed the guy. Like when that can happen, what do you do to live in this world? Do you use it for gain or do you use it for negativity? We went into how these technologies help and what they can do and what you have to do to actively make sure that you're not a detriment to the rest of this world. But here, that's different because we're not afraid of killing. We do it because it's the normal. People are going to sneak up on us. People are going to attack us. People are going to write us. We have to be a better shooter. And this pit boy is going to immediately make those odds better, no matter what, besides the other things that it does. Pit Boy, damn it. The Pit Boy is a jump from a clunky old phone to a smartwatch with cell service. You've made more hype aware of yourself and your surroundings. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. You are getting communicated with with a device that you never up until that point had the opportunity to do that thing with, and then it becomes Gonzo. It it's it it goes it goes it goes guilty yeah um it's a huge jump at that point your capacity to find anything out using the information that you have to google things to watch things to read things to have access to materials you never had the access to before it is a similar jump in that because all of that is at your fingertips it's all right there at your fingertips. <laughs> the, the the phone to cell phone makes a lot of sense because it has a lot of capability. You could have done a lot of good things and a lot of bad things with those phones. That is on a massive scale compared to a Pip-Boy, which is really very individualized because there's only so many out there. So if you had the smartphone and like the, the scarcity of the original telephone, that is more what you're looking at. Imagine if seven people in, in the state of New Jersey, let's say when the telephone was first invented, had an infinite ability to get as much information as they could possibly ever want. That they could ever need. They could look up anything. Like, past or future, it would be there. They would have today's internet. They would know historical things before whatever happened. They would be able to find out how to survive in certain in certain environments better, to figure out formulas for things and improve on them and have hundreds of potential extra years. Well, however much time, not hundreds, but let's say uh, 150. 150 extra years to improve on what was already there. That is what the Pip-Boy does. It's a huge jump forward in technology for what is there. It's a lot to put that onto the shoulders of one guy. Here's all the knowledge and internet and power you could ever want. To a guy I go and show to 150 years ago. I go to see Ben Franklin and he's like, holy shit. Uh, we went to the moon in the sky. We went to the fucking moon. Are you kidding? We went to the moon. Yeah, dude, I'm trying to sh I'm trying to show you this meme. We, we in the the moon and the sky, like it would be like that. Um, <laughs> that's not where I wanted that to go. But the this, the concept is still sound. If I gave Ben Franklin all of the knowledge we have today in a handy rectangle the size of something that could fit in his 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 giant pockets, the world would be vastly greatly different. Much like the courier does in his journey through the wasteland. Lives are inexplicably changed due to the extra knowledge, the extra ability, and the extra hands that the courier is offering on this quest for revenge. And it is almost, I think, because this ability is thrust upon him that he needs to do this stuff. Besides just helping people out. Because again, nobody helps people out in the wasteland. 
It's really all your, if you're in a community, you're in a community, but like it's really everybody's out there for themselves. You see that in Cass, you see that in Boone, you see that in uh, Raul because he doesn't even know where to go. Arcade is the, like, the only one. Uh, Veronica even like doesn't want to be part of the Brotherhood of Steel anymore. Arcade is the only one that's like, no, I need to be in this community. I'm a doctor and I help people. I can help go follow you around, but like it's going to suck for the people that are there. Everybody else is a weird drifter. They don't have a home. You are their home. You you bring them towards you because of your agency. And the pit boy is part of that, I think. And that is boiling the role of the protagonist down to a singular object. But it really is. With everything that it has and it does, it's the MacGuffin. It can't solve every problem. It can't make a water chip. It can't purify water. It can't find your lost son, except it does because it'll give you the quest markers. You know what I mean. You have multiple personality disorder. Did some trauma cause this? Trauma. Yes, in a manner of speaking. Do you see these wounds of his covering his skin? The bear trap on his arm. He placed his own hand in it. The name he carved in his chest. To remind him of who he is, he inflicts pain on himself to silence me. When all I try to do... He cuts, hurts, and tries to murder me out of him. He won't succeed. Just makes me angrier. Dog is the beast. We simply change cages. Like the ones here. So Dog and God are a character that has multiple personality disorder, and I don't know how accurate it is. I can't vouch for it. Um, if somebody does have multiple personality disorder or, or disassociative identity disorder or anything like that, and they can get more information on whether or not Dog and God is like a good, uh, maybe not representation, uh, but like if they portray the concept well enough, uh, in a way that's not offensive or anything. I would like to know that. I don't know that, but I would like to know that. Um, Dog is unwilling to share his space with another. And that is honestly a terrifying thing. To develop a, a second personality after being so fully formed so fully fleshed out as a person to go through some trauma and to have another you. I'm pretty sure that's that has to be in some ways terrifying for your self. Whichever self that may end up being at that point. But this is for God and for dog, a terrifying scenario. Each is antagonistic against each other. It is it is literally uh, an internal struggle, a conflict between man and himself, between man and man's best friends, even between God, uh, the Maker of man, and man's best friend, the Maker of man's best friend. I forgot the point I was going to make with that. But um, he, they're both antagonistic towards each other and they both want each other to go. But God tries to just make sure that dog doesn't murder them. God is also smarter than dog and can say anything about what dog is doing. I'm looking for somebody with a collar like mine. Where's your collar? It's close. Closer than I'd like. <laughs> Dog's been into things. Needs to think before he eats. Chew before he swallows. He's eager that way. 
Now the collar's a part of me. Inside. <sighs> I can feel its electronic heartbeat clicking and burning down below. Like before. It was cold and heavy before going in the cage. Now you're here, and it's pulling and kicking again, tugging like a leash. Interesting. If that collar is active, I didn't switch it on. Really? Yet it led you here, to me. And now you're here, and it's burning a hole in my guts. Maybe it's crying for its owner. How the hell did you or whoever eat one of those collars? They detach. When segmented, they look like nothing more than metallic rad scorpions. And if they're attached to neck flesh, warm, red, dog doesn't care what's on the body he's crushing in his hands. He'll mangle it, twist it, make it fit until he's full. Dog can't help himself. Hungry, greedy, and now the collar's inside, alive again. And we're trapped here until it goes cold. Dog and God are the id and the ego. One of rational thought and that has to control the irrational impulse. But only one can be active at, the, at a time. They have to actively impose each other's will on each other as they're going forward in order to try and survive in this shared body. Maybe you shouldn't shove old world tech in your stomach. As if I had a choice. Sometimes instinct takes over, and that's when I go into the cage. It's like curiosity that way. After all, you wouldn't have put that collar on by choice. Perhaps it was your curiosity that caused that hand to close on your neck. I wanted to know it was down here. That's all. You good know me? I had other questions. You wouldn't have locked yourself in there without some kind of key to let you out. The key? Why, it's the old man, the one who brought us here. I hid the key on me so Dog wouldn't know. I just need the old man to show up so he and I can talk. <coughs> if Dog was in control when the old man appeared, Ow. well, he would just do whatever he commanded, as always. And I can't have that. If you have the key in there, the old man can order the dog to open the cage. Dog obeys, yes. Why? Do you have some means of contacting the old man? Don't blink. Don't blink. Come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Come here, come here, come here, come here. There you go. She had like a piece of rice stuck to her eye. Honey, how did you do that? I can play his voice. I have an audio log from him, my pit boy. You don't play it. If you do, I'll find a way to get out of the cage and you. I'll murder you, crush your arms and legs until. Calm down. If you follow me, I won't do it. No, you wouldn't. If you did, you won't escape this place alive. Yeah, okay. I'd shatter every one of your limbs to splinters and leave you here. You think I'm afraid of your collar exploding, killing us? No. I'll leave you breathing, then keep walking until my collar goes cold. Great. I'll prop your broken body in view of the Sierra Madre so you can see what you came to steal. Forever out of reach, out of reach as, as you, you die. die. Look, dude, I can't convince you I'm not here for the Sierra Madre or the old man, so I'll prove it. Prove it. How? Words are worthless. I have the power to let Dog out of his cage, and I'm going to prove it by not doing it. 
Hmm. No. No, you're not. Even though dogs more docile, easier to control. You may regret this. This place. This place is where creatures like dog can survive. The people that fill its streets. He is as vicious, more vicious than them. His hunger can help you more than I can. When I am in control, this shell is difficult to fight in. What do you mean? The inhabitants of the villa, they are difficult to kill. They need to be chopped apart, hacked on the ground, disintegrated if you can. They are difficult to kill, but not to devour. Mm. And Dog is always hungry. If he is with you when they fall, he will fall on them, end them. If I am with you, fighting will be far more difficult. We can manage. <laughs> I am not sure you belong here. No, you don't belong here. Yet, you came this far. Mm. And I'm not interested in remaining here any longer. I'll unlock the cage. Let's get out of here. Bonus of stealth and no traps. Wish I had a stealth boy instead of this bear trap. Yeah, well. All right. We got dog. Jesus. Charlie, hang on. I'm trying not to die. Nice, nice, nice. Got him. Okay, I have a lot of ammo for these, so I might as well just keep using them. What about more gold? What are you saying to me, to God? Okay. Uh, where? You know what? <sighs> that wasn't helpful. Local map. I need to go even further than that. Okay, I need to go this way. Quick save. This way. Back up and out here. Something needs to die. Nice. Nice. Head, head. Ooh, complete head. He got head. So no head. Need to make sure. Wow, that skeleton died trying to get coins. <laughs> That's environmental storytelling. Thanks, Bethesda. Okay. Okay. I am... Feeling a little more confident. Hmm. Probably a little bit of both. Machines feed on Sierra Madre chips. There's codes that unlock other things. Oh, too. yeah, that's right. I can go and put my chip codes in. I guess I don't have to worry about that. Almost. How am I not of a break yet? I don't know. I can take a break now. Um, it's probably a good idea, actually. Uh, we're going to take a quick break over here at the Sandwich Experience. We'll be playing a little more Fallout New Vegas after this. Um, don't touch the dial. You will not smile. we are right back here at the Sandwich Experience very shortly. Bye. We're back. Here on the Sandwich Experience. We're back. Play some... Vegas. If I have the 
the opportunity to do that. Hold on, give me one sec. There we go, now we're back. Okay. Uh, uh there tastes like copper or old world gold. Thank you, God. God. It's me, Margaret. I'm gonna go in the residential district next. God, I, I was trying to pick that up because it was shiny. I'm glad that I got that. That was that was a mine. I thought I saw one more. Whoa. The game, the game was chugging a little bit. It gave, it gave me some frameies. I didn't think. Shut up! Get to Dean Domino's hideout in the residential district. I will. Oh, I could have just walked across that. I have to make that jump like that. That! I didn't even notice that shotgun. Holy shit. That! Would have been real bad. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. You're... You're sad. Move! Move! God. Ha ha ha. What? Oh, another shotgun. God, they're just... Uh, just a bunch of the traps, huh? Can't wait when enemies are nearby. Can't do anything until. Hey, dog. Can you um? If you're. There you go. Probably. Boy of this bear yeah, there you go. Now you're not stuck anymore. Jeez. Idiot swallowed his collar. Scrap electronics. Oh, I'm probably gonna need some. Traps everywhere. I forgot how many traps there were here. Jesus. What was this supposed to be connected to? Grenade bouquet? No? I can't see what that would have been. Oh, I cannot wait there. Old world gold. Yeah, I know. I know. Where? I didn't see. Oh, there. Headshot! Save ammo with headshots, remember. Ooh, get that mine. Disarm that pressure plate that almost shot me with that shotgun. And... Yeah, that would have killed me. Can I sleep? I can't sleep here either. 
It's your own fault you're here. Shut up. Leave well enough alone. No, look, I already know the themes of this. You don't have to tell me. Won't get rid of uh, me uh, that uh. easily. Bobby pins. I can't rest here. Do not activate the toilet. I do not need the toilet. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling I'm feeling the tension. I'm understanding what this is trying to do more now. I didn't like it back when I first played it. But I'm I I, I think I was just mad that I, they you know, I wasn't developed enough to realize, oh, they took all your stuff and that's the point because it's about leaving things behind. Well, Shut up! How many times are you gonna say that voice line? That's a lot, a lot of barks you got, dog. The joke isn't funny because it's God. Also, I'd have to explain what a bark is. And a bark is a sound that a NPC makes uh, in... It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be in context of something, but usually it's in service of, you know, at least in the environment. Or... Straight shooter or a sucker, huh? Is that what you think of me, Dean? You haven't even met me yet. Bobby pins, thank you. Can I sleep in this bed? No. It's your own fault you're here. Oh, you set that signal on repeat. Dean could have been the one that got stuck there, and then nobody else would have gotten stuck there then, I guess. That's rough, dude. It is your fault, then. If that's the case. That tourist crosses me, they'll regret it. If they do, they still might. Couldn't leave well <laughs> enough alone. Well. We'll see, Dean. So this is what happens. Oh, well, I guess nothing cuz my collar blew and didn't right show me. Behind you. Have a seat and then we'll talk. Have a seat. Came all this way. I didn't Best take I you as a seat for a second. The Sierra Madre. Beauty, isn't she? She the one who invited you here. Or maybe you didn't catch her voice on the radio. Woke up confused like some of the others. At least you're still breathing. By the way, don't get up or make any sudden motions, no matter how uncomfortable that chair gets. The cushion's just for show. This better be a shape charger. You're going to kill both of us. Sounds like you've done some blue-collar construction work in your life. Your ma must be proud. Still, get up without my permission. I'll blast your ass so far through your head, it'll turn the moon cherry pie red. It's a good one. So, let's keep this sweet and polite and finish our conversation with no misunderstandings. I'll save my questions for the end. Go on. And that's what I've missed, a rapt audience. Just because I work in entertainment doesn't mean I'm a moron. I heard my necktie beeping. I know what that means. I'm part of this somehow. I want out of this contract. And if you put me in it, I'm not going to be too happy. So whatever's going on here, if you're part of all this, you're taking orders from me. Your negotiation skills assume that you're bargaining from a position of strength, my friend. What are you talking about? Our collars. These neckties. 
are linked. I die. You die. That's an interesting clause. That's a real bad contract you have. We have. We have, yeah. It's starting to make sense now that I've met you. <laughs> all right, all right. Looks like Medage finally caught me. I'm listening, partner. What's next if we're death till we part? We meet at the fountain. We'll hear where the next step is going to be. Not leaving me much choice. The fountain, huh? Hope the hologram's still working and the battery's running strong. I'll follow you. I'm not going alone, trust me. Not like I'm a coward or anything. I'm not running around town without an escort. I'm serious. One of the locals catches us. We aren't coming back. And I'd like to keep an eye on you. Fine, get up and follow me. All right, all right. But you already got company, so tell you what. I'll meet you at the fountain. Don't have to take the long way back. There's a shortcut across the way, you see. It's through the cloud. But if I'm with you, I can... Shaky Johnson, thank you for the level up. Stay healthy if you will kill Yoda. Shaky Johnson, thank you for the level up over here in the Sandwich Experience. Also, stay healthy. Be well. Kill Yoda. <laughs> Music to mine ears. Shaky Johnson. There are 183 followers. I love that. Thank you for putting Yoda on in the background as well. You got me to my level. My next level. Fellow bread enjoyer, not just a bread enjoyer, I made this sandwich earlier on my stream. You'll have to come back and check the VOD. I also read it as Sharky Johnson, and I was like, nope, gotta read that right. But, we're here. Play New Vegas. Sorry, I'm finishing this sandwich. As my name implies. We're playing New Vegas. In the midst of dead money. We just meet De we just met Dean Domino. The plan is coming together. It's common. You never thought of it originally. I didn't. I thought people would just be able to say Richard Sandwichard because it rhymes. I get Sandwichard. I get Sandwichard. I get Sandwichard. Sandwichard. Put my explosives up. Put my science up. Put my guns up. Put my melee unarmed up. I can get a perk. I got a lot of perks to pick from. Fading fingerprints. Cam resistant. Pit boy upgrade. Sandwich Charizard. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. You got that right in one. Silent running. Where's the one that gives you additional limb damage? I could take Where's My Pants? It's not Jerry rigging. I could take Where's My Pants and get out of here. I don't know how that would break the video game, though. Oh, if I knew that was an option and, like, I could do... I mean, technically I could. I don't know. Um, we're gonna get technical strategist, purifier, action boy. Wow, an additional 15 points to use in vets. It's so good. 
Center of mass. Hold on, where is it? I can even picture what it looks like. I guess I just can't get it yet. I can also run while sprinting. Field medic. Fallen ally with that. I don't know what to take on perks. Not anymore. Another level. I don't need that. There we go. I'll just get better uh, vats and bullet time. Oh. Run while sprinting? Yeah, I can run while sprinting. Let's see what else I got to pick. Wimp in silence. Potential appears when you use stealth boy. You do significantly more damage under the effects of the stealth boy. That's interesting. Concentrated fire. When you're actually to hit any body part, vast increase the slight with its subsqueak. Wait. Said squeak quit. I got a lot of perks, and not every one of them has helped. Sneak attack criticals with pistols, revolver, submachine guns, etc. is a pretty good one, honestly. My greed will kill me. My greed will kill me. No, I'm not trying to lose you in the cloud. I'm trying to find out how to get out of this cloud. Jeez. I did get a stim pack out of that. And a bunch of other stuff. For a second I thought I died suddenly. Oh my god. Quick save. Oh my god. Oh, I have so much food. I can just eat some food. Get some health back that way. Uh, food, food. I can't wait in this location either. That Damn it. Boy. Maybe I'll tear it off your arm. Wear it on my neck. Why would you do that? I don't appreciate that. Oh my god. I'm no longer being poisoned by a toxic cloud. Program is digest. Boy, howdy. Oh, I do have a couple stim packs. I have a lot of health, though. Okay, I'm out again. Every time, every time. Jesus. Dog, you gotta, you gotta chill, dude. F5 to save, run through the cloud. Whew. Now the balance is only more in my favor specifically because I have the ability to sprint. It doesn't make it that much easier. Steady sugar bombs. Don't, bro, you are, you keep saying that. that pit boy Stop! <laughs> oh my god. Wow, Dean did not care. He simply did not care.
First he scares me. I thought I died. I might still die. Nothing, nothing. I hear it. Okay. Touched by I cannot wait in this location either. Choose to spend your time here. Well, now, if it isn't my ball, chain, and dog collar rolled all into one. Have other people shown up in search of the Sierra Madre? Tourists, you bet. They don't stay long, and they don't stay alive long. If they survive uh. the cloud, the ghost people, the traps, then greed takes over, and they start sizing each other up for funeral suits. So they all killed each other. Sure. First they figure they can get out, escape. Then they start thinking it over, start thinking about how they can have it all. They start weighing the odds, taking risks, and then taking each other out. Bum collars are not. Although, it's odd. The bum collars weren't linked before like they are now. Guess someone learned what the problem was. Nobody will work together. And what happened? Dead. Either got killed by one of the villa's attractions, locals, or the beautiful weather. Can tell you right now, they didn't stick close to each other, and when they did, they let down their guard at the wrong moment. Oof. Some left signposts to others trying to help them out. Just led to them getting killed by someone a little more greedy than <laughs> they were. And there any advice to get through this? Well. Considering my life's on the line, too, yeah, a few things. First off, keep everyone together. Keep checking behind you. Make sure your partners are following. Don't let them wander. Also, don't go running crazy everywhere. Almost every inch of this town is lethal. So if you're not sure, take it real slow. And speaking of slow, don't go shouting. Or attracting attention. Go quiet. The ghost people find you. It's over. And these ghost people are the only ones alive around here then. Alive is a tricky word. The locals, the ghost people, not sure it applies to them. They're a little uncivilized. They don't talk much. As in at all. Have you tried to deal with them? Tried talking to them, bribing them, leaving food, nothing. In the years since, they haven't changed their approach, but I sure have. They catch the you years you since, the huh? Cloud, and you're not coming back out. Because you would have set that to restart. That You've been here this whole time, Dean. Go off would be mercy. My advice: stay out of their way. They don't die easy. Dean has been here for a very long time, it seems. Though. A very long time since it opened, considering he put that... Maybe not since it's open, but he put that uh, radio broadcast to repeat. You How tough are they? They get back up. You stab them, they get back up. That's why I have explosives all over this place. Unless you blow them up, chop them up, oh, disintegrate Dean. them... The ghost people don't go down. You're the one that put Not traps everywhere. It's in the town to spend on them. So unless you're a real good shot, hmm. save one for yourself right before they catch you. One shot, one kill is how I handle my problems, though. Well, you seem like you know how to handle yourself. All right. Once I fired a lucky shot, hit a gas tank one was holding. Blew his arm off at the shoulder, and he didn't get back up after that. So if you're that good, don't aim for the head, aim for their bombs. And if you can wait until his buddies are close by, even better. This has a limb 
removal system in order to defeat enemies ye a couple years before Dead Space did. A couple years. Where do they come from? Friend, there's more mysteries in heaven and earth. Wait, no. If there is more between heaven and earth, oh, forget it. <laughs> I'd sooner ask what makes me an undying son of a bitch than spend any thought as to why they crawl to life here. I'm counting myself lucky. I still have my faculties. They sure don't. He's been here for a while. Then again, they may not have had the focus I do. They don't know what makes a ghoul go feral. Always had the Sierra Madre to keep my mind occupied. Most folks, they don't have the same drive, the same need. Not worth my time. Pretty much ghost people before the bomb, now ghost people after. Anything else about them I should know? We do, don't rile them up. Normally there's only a few, maybe a pack. There's more out there, a lot more. If they find out someone's trespassing, it'd be shaking a hornet's nest. Don't want to think how many of them could fill these streets. Uh, well, I shoot them where I can. I did find a couple of your stashes. Why'd you leave them around? Well, because I needed stuff. Why? Survival. I still needed to leave the residential area to scrounge up supplies, and I don't like taking chances. The villa's dangerous. So I left weapons and stims in case I got in a tight spot. And then I took everything. Show up putting your mitts on everything. I suppose this qualifies as an emergency, so I'm not complaining. Much. Scrounge supplies like what? I still need to eat. At least I think I do. <laughs> provides. Even if it's not as glamorous as the cantina. Actually, we don't know if Sorry. ghouls need to well, eat or not. Realized what they you could do. Up around here. I had a lot of time they just to do. experiment. Not the best chef, but well, here's the mix if you can stomach it. I call it the Sierra Madre Martini. And how do you make it? Scrape some cloud residue off the walls, mash it in a tin can with some junk food from the machines, and hold your nose and down it. There's electric hot plates around if you can't find a campfire to mix it at. Gross. Also, there's other recipes you can do with the cloud residue. Although it might take a hardier survivalist than me to brew them. I stick to martinis. Of course you do. Do you saw you Sierra Madre, Madre Martini perk allowing me to mix cloud residue with junk food in a tin can at a campfire or electric hot plate for a surprisingly strong, restorative, and disgusting drink? But other questions. Oh God! What are the vending machines? All nah, what are they? Those little company stores. Sinclair's toy boxes. Put in the casino chip. Get a treat. Like you're some dog doing tricks. Take any of the casino chips. Put them into the machine, and you'll get something out. A snack, a cola, something to mend a tear in your shirt. Sometimes you have to know exactly what to ask for. Other times, there's codes for, uh, unconventional items. For emergencies. I've never seen machines like this before. Yeah, well, machines like those weren't unusual before the bomb. Maybe to you they're amazing. To me, they're grifters without the personality. <laughs> Thank you, Yoda. Grifters? Sinclair made sure if you spent money here, it went one direction. Uh, uh, oh, that's uh. That's not how he described it. How did he describe it? Called it self-sufficient. Like he was doing the residents a favor. Self-sufficient. Right. What other items can you get out of those machines? If it's an emergency, you can get chems for any, uh, condition. Sinclair left that for doctors and trained professionals, not the common folk. Even security and maintenance could get special supplies out of them. Staff had codes on little cards they could use to unlock them. Where can I find these cards? Around. Don't have much use for them myself. Not worth the risk to get them. I got all the Fine. basics covered as long as I have the chips to pay for them. I don't need much. I had other questions. Tell me about the cloud. 
the cloud showed up after the bomb. I think. I got used to it in small doses. Now it covers the city. Over the years, it kept climbing up out of the Sierra Madre until it was curtains for the sun. Didn't see the sky again. The cloud is bother the ghost awful. People. Can't see through it too well, though. So sometimes I can use the cloud for cover if I get desperate. What can you tell me about the villa in the town? The residential area, clinic, police station. Should keep away from the police station. It's a ghost people hang out. Salida del Sol, Puesta del Sol, East Town, West Town. Sunrise and sunset. Or were when the streets and sky weren't covered with toxic gas. Ghost people don't come into the villa much. West Town and East Town, though, they're thick with the cloud and ghost people. Like hunting birds. Ghost people hunting in packs. We should travel together. Lose the second stringer, and I'll make the time. If it isn't the clever one, what do you want? Uh. You. Well. Okay, you're at the fountain. Well, I wasn't no. sure how that was going to work. I don't remember. Unclean living. The perk grants you a short period of time before taking damage inside a toxic cloud, as well as reducing the amount of damage you take inside by 25%. And that's a really good perk. That is a very good perk. Let me eat some food. And drink a little bit of water. If I didn't want a hardcore experience, well, I'm still getting one anyway. Doctor's bag. 55. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it even just to get one. Those machines. The villa's comp speakers have aged poorly, like the modern. Pretty more junk. But the speakers are better signal that'll shut off your caller if you stay too. You can't switch them off. That's right. Ooh. So with Wild Wasteland on for this one in particular, we should have a different um, model and character line that the ghost people give you. Originally, they uh, were just men in suits or whatever, but I believe now with Wild Wasteland on, their texture changes um, and they should have... A I believe they have a skull face. Go, 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 go. And they say out loud at you, Hey, who turned out the lights? In reference to... Uh, Hey, Benny, I'm wearing your suit. How am I wearing Benny's suit? How am I wearing Benny's suit? Why is that here? Why is it here? Giraffe. Giraffe, thank you for the giraffe. I'm... No offense, but you guys are lowering the bar.
Shut up. Alright, Dean, you don't need to complain 100% of the time, dude. There we go. There we go. I just don't want to deal with these guys. And wearing Benny's suit is a bad idea, as I expected. I can't fix it? Ugh. I don't have the stuff to make. Wasteland tequila. Sierra Madre Martini. I need some junk food. Specifically junk food, I guess. Pork and the beans and spam. Oh, there's a Dean case up there. I don't know how to get up there. There is a Dean case up there that I can go get. I just keep taking everything out of containers and not looking at what I'm taking. Let me go and dump some stuff I don't need. Auto rifle upgrade for internals. I can put that on there. That's nice. Ugh. Okay. Where was that? No. No. Yes. This has the advanced receiver I can put on there. Modify. Upgraded internals. Faster rate of fire. Does this take the same... Oh, this takes the same ammo, doesn't it? 308. No, police pistol takes 357. I just happen to have a similar number. It's not that similar, but I still have a similar enough number that I got confused momentarily. Ooh, okay, where's this one? Excuse me? Oh. Jeez, okay. That had a really big radius. Take as much stuff as I can. That's the thing, like, I just want to take everything into Sierra Madre because I never know what's actually going to be useful. Sunglasses. Am I going to need sunglasses? No. Am I going to want sunglasses? No. Do I need them? No. Do I want them? Yeah. Alright, and I can go all the way around. I'm lowering the bar. Bro, I'm gonna be the one that gets us out of here. Don't be an asshat to the guy who's literally gonna save your life. Is that stuff down there? Dana boy apples and water? That's not worth that. And we're in the Watch villa clinic. Security. Not as nice as the lady at the fountain. Not trust. nice, okay. Dean, let's take a quick break. I have to go to the bathroom real quick. We'll be back here on the sandwich and experience very shortly. Like, touch that dial you will not smell. I'll be back here very shortly. I'm gonna go put my plate in a sink and go to the bathroom. Hold on! Who used the butt? Nobody used the butt. Nobody went for the butt this time. Sorry, Steel. 
I guess we're doing it this way. All right. Continue. You you didn't think that you what you expected out of that? That is from Hypnospace Outlaw, a game I just finished on stream yesterday. Um, it has there's a lot of there there's not a lot of video games there's not a lot of video games that I can say are very Richard sandwichered video games. Oh the butt redeem was out of stock? I have to fix that. That shouldn't be That shouldn't be. I'm sorry, Steel. Um It's from Hypnospace Outlaw. It is a website in Hypnospace Outlaw promoting a Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. And it is a uh, Chowderman rap take on the classic Granny Jingle. Oh, yeah, Schmeezing also just kept budding. Set behavior, uploading mood pattern. Oh, God. They perform this function better than most conventional security guards. Oh, God. Okay. We're gonna have to figure this one out. Well, that could have screwed the pooch. It probably didn't. But it could have. Is there anything in here I need? Ah, oh, chips. I should take the limit off of the butt then. I didn't realize it had a... Uh, a, a limit or a cooldown, honestly. Oh, terminal. Options. Lurking. Pouring. Oh, God. I'm out of options. I've been lurking and pouring. Oh, I'm good. Uh, working. Cutting. Melting. Hurting. Feeling. Implies. I didn't see that one. Log on, admin. Appointment visit. Mr. Keys showed up today. Saint Sinclair escorted by Mr. Domino. He explained to me, Dean's been here the whole time. <sighs> he got turned into a ghoul after the bombs fell. He explained to me Ms. Keys had developed a throat infection and asked if the auto dock would help. I asked about the Sierra Madre's auto dock. She, he said he didn't want to alarm Sinclair. Ran some tests. Ms. Key, Ms. Keys' voice is fine. Her loss of voice was more listlessness. Crispy 308, thank you for tuning into the Sandwich Experience tonight. Where's my button for claps? My button for claps isn't working. Wait, look, now we'll play some more New Vegas. I got my shit to work, finally. I'm glad we're here. You always got the butt? I appreciate that, dude. How was your stream? I caught you right at the end. Let's give a shout out to, to my boy Driss. If it works, thank you. <gasps> Nermal. Oh, this is going to give me a copyright strike. Oh, no, it's not. I'm fine. <laughs> Make it rain. You enjoyed some Valheim? I'm glad you're playing Valheim. I'm glad you're playing some stuff that um, you can enjoy. Uh, appointment calendar. I'm, I'm really glad you're playing stuff that you you yourself can enjoy on your own. Um, don't... I'm, I... I love that you've played Mario RPG and stuff that doesn't have, like, 5,000 people actively watching or whatever, right? Right? You don't have that... This is back towards the entrance. God damn it. It's a holo projector? Yeah! Disable the emitter, thank you. Super stim pack. But, uh, Drizzle, I hope you're having a good night, dude. I know. 
There's there's so many people. Crispy, thank you for the follow, dude. We've gotten to 185 follows. Thank, thank you so much for the Toasty, I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of doing it, Toasty. Thank you for Seriously, we should get out of here. The security hologram. Shut up! <laughs> Sorry there, Dean. I had to shoot you a little bit. Um, thank you for the follow. Uh, <laughs> so much, Crispy. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your time here. We're, we're, we're doing our best. We're doing our best. I got this video to play when we get raided that'll show you a clip of my nonsense because I don't just have a button. Actually, I might... Oh god, I don't know. But I actually do have a button in an action command. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Action groups. Random video. Out the, clam tram. the gargle filter is turned off? Oh, this is the Hobeard one. What? Hobeard! <laughs> you truly got me. You truly got me. You're truly gone. Oh my god. Hey. I got a couple of those. Um, I guess I, I don't have it on. Something is a sandwich. Using my patented sandwich or sandwich school method. As you can see, we've got a number of things in the sandwich matrix to go and look at. What we're going to be doing is assigning mud. Mud is dirt and water. Technically, it really exists as a sandwich conceptually. I'm not advised eating it. And in fact, I'd hardly say it's a good idea to go and do anything with it at all. Just get rid of the mud. Throw the mud out. Remove the mud. <laughs> Remove the, the mud from the place it needs to be or doesn't is need to be. Mud a sandwich? Is mud a sandwich? Mud is layered by mud technicality, mud is layered by so, technicality that so that it means it exists automatically in radical sandwich anarchy. Because its structure and ingredients are undesirable as a sandwich, as a sandwich so it would be radical sandwich anarchy. So that's an easy one. <laughs> but! <laughs> See, that's the kind of shit we get up to. I'm sorry. Damn, I took that finance clipboard. Shut up, Dean! I am literally going to be the one that is saving your ass. Like, you don't care. Can't get that one. Stimpak. Ooh, code for Stimpak. Auburn book, today's position, security terminal. No, ooh, turn back around. Okay. I don't remember which way I came in. Ooh, stash. Take everything. Of course I'm gonna help myself, dude. Hi, baby. Christine is in 983 feet. Dean. No, that's wrong. Okay, down and around. Unless I was coming from the right way anyway. Yeah, I was. Uh, heal all my crippled limbs? Yeah, I'd like to heal all of my crippled limbs. I forgot about these auto docs. They could do that. But they can only hear, heal my limbs. I don't get health out of it, but it heals my limbs. Quick save. What you need surgery done. The speakers on the wall are making my nerves do a dance. Yeah, me too, dude. You're not special. Exhaustion. Miss Key's insomnia seems to have gotten worse. We ended up ordering the new autodoc upgrades. It must have cost Sinclair a fortune. New programs for the autodocs ameliorate the effects of exhaustion. 
Okay. I've already spoken to the staff about side effects and dangers of prolonged use. I wanted to make sure they weren't using it to pull double shifts. Sinclair asked if these codes would be downloaded to the public dispensers. The codes aren't compatible, unfortunately. He said he'd look into it. Guess his contacts at the Big Mountain. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Shine. Holy shit, dude. Thank you for coming. And, and, uh, hold on. I got, hold on. There's a video that's going to play in. Toasty. Play the video. Thanks. Toasty. Thank you. take me home remember to clean up my poop i'm here for you <laughs> yeah! i am the burger king in this wonderful experience a human centipede is that a sandwich so your ingredients are not sandwich ingredients as they exist Thank you, Shine, for coming and hanging out tonight here on the Sandwich and Experience. What are we playing in the clip? What are we playing in the clip? Hold on, what are we playing in the clip? That didn't help. It's something scary. You're crawling. Oh my god! Something horror. I that I couldn't tell what that was, dude. You have to you have to tell me. Shine! How is Destiny? What did you get? Did you get anything cool today? Do you get any exotics that I could use for stuff that you can brag at me for? Because now I'm playing Destiny. <laughs> I hope so. I hope you got a good time. Um, thank you for tuning into the Sandwicher Experience. My name is Richard Sandwicher, as you already heard. Got the new exotic catalyst that rocks. Good shit. Um, the the new exotic, the one the. The machine gun that fires the explosive rounds. I need you to do a weekly run of. I gotta play some of those. The yeah, wicked implement. I have to play some of those. Uh, I gotta play the new content, but I'm not. I'm not there yet because I. It's, I don't have. Also, don't have. Uh, no, I just bought Lightfall actually because it was on sale. Wicked implement the Stasis Scout from fishing. I gotta get the fishing then. I went fishing. I actually, um, I just got something from fishing. I don't remember what I got from fishing, but I got something from fishing. But I'm glad. Good shit. Uh, I'm on my this scene. And then I'm on my this scene. Oh, I'm sorry. Clean up my poop, please. We were playing some Fallout New Vegas. We're still playing some Fallout New Vegas. I'm glad you decided to come hang out. Uh, thank you for deciding. That was a uh, uh, good time to share your audience. Share some cool people with me. Hello. There are channel points down there. Some of them are uh, relatively cheap and make me go crazy and I love them. Um, if anything, you can also just push buttons. I don't think I have some limits on some stuff. Push buttons, have fun. Uh, are we getting a call soon? Exhaustion. I just finished the note when you raided in. Oh, I'm still getting beeped at. I'm still getting beeped at. I'm still getting beeped at. Holy shit. Well, I gotta play some more Destiny soon. I mean, I'm playing it... I'm playing it damn near every day. Like, I play some after I get out of work. Like... Run, 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 run. Oh my god, there's more than one. Oh my god, there's more than one. Holy shit, there's more than one. Holy shit. The death counter has been changed. I lost Dean's unclean living perk. Balls on his gun last time. I did have balls on my gun last time. I I jumped into a, a real quick thing with uh with steel and I had balls on my gun. The game was in was in silence. I don't even know what that is. Dean has died. Well, I mean, I could have told you that one. Okay. I don't recall... Holy shit. I didn't even notice these guys before either. Holy crap.
You about died? I'm sorry, Crispy. What'd you die to? Gas leak. Gas leak? The gas building up in the vents in the town. Chemical suits arrived today. They're bulky, hard to talk and move in. It was difficult to unlock. The class was in place, so I had to get one of the staff to help me out of it. Oof. I told the construction crew to keep the suits ready while working in the switching station and to be careful with them. We only have a limited number. I asked Sinclair to, or to order more in the event of a leak in the villa and prepared cost estimates for another gas leak to support my case. Didn't need to. He agreed to the request immediately, then asked if he could see the workers and make sure they were all right. Did this... Take the assassin suit. Take cosmic knife. What is... What is the assassin suit? Shine, you're gonna do a lurk and vibe in the background? Please do. All the love, all the love back. All the love back, dude. It's great to see you here. If you don't box back before the end, absolutely. Go, go hang out. Do what you gotta do. All right, I'm gonna wear this for a little while. This is my outfit for... For the, this cool DLC, I guess. Jesus. You're putting dynamite people's pockets. Oh, you're putting dynamite. <laughs> you didn't get away fast enough. You blew yourself to kingdom come. That's pretty good. I had the key? Oh my god, I had the key. Okay, good. Oh, it's so dark. It's so dark. Can I wait down here? I can wait down here. I have... A cheap way to get health back. Fruits are growing out of your head. I also have fruits that grow in my head. I had... I had... I had fruit that grew in my head. That's why you like long fuse dynamites. I typically don't shove things in people's pockets. I've done it once or twice as a goof, but I don't typically do it. Uh, it's very funny when it does happen though. Collect the status. That's, wait, hold on. Autodox powered. Disengage main power. Emergency systems only. And get Christine out of the Vita Dock. Okay. That's the build until you get a grenade launcher? Okay. You're... Oh my god. Oh my god. What are you gonna do in, like, regular combat? Also, do you not have the mercenaries grenade launcher from the uh, DLC that it dumps in your inventory immediately? like the one really bad thing I li I, I, I don't like about uh, the opening of New Vegas. All the DLC it dumps on you. It doesn't even spread it out. There are mods to fix that, but it shouldn't be modded. It shouldn't have to be modded. EMP generator implants. Okay, I'll take those. Holy shit, was that actual animation? The woman before you looks disoriented, pained. She blinks a few times, winces, as if the act hurts. Who are you? She looks at you, blinks again, then opens her mouth, but nothing comes out. She touches her throat, the traces a scar beneath her chin. Her eyes widen in alarm. I'm here to help. She looks shaken. She glances at the autodoc, then recoils and her mouth opens, but again, nothing comes out. She looks back at you, her hands clenched into fists, her eyes narrow. She takes a sick back, studying you. This isn't what it looks like. The woman opens her mouth again, winces and frowns, and draws a finger to her throat in slow motion. She looks more angry than pained now. Frowning, she touches her throat again, gently, then her hand brushes her collar, and then her frown deepens. Her eyes narrow, she traces the edge of the collar until she finds the lock. She begins to press it with her fingers. It's a bomb collar. Mess with it, and it'll go off. You start with them, but you like to save Emma? I understand. What do you want to have grenades to spare, is what you mean. She looks surprised, then notices your collar and raises an eyebrow. Let's just say we're in this together. She frowns, narrows her eyes, then slowly shakes her head. 
What do you mean by that? She shakes her head again and draws a line in the air between the two of you. Look, together we can get out of this. She shakes her head once, then crosses her arms. I'm not trying to order you, but your life is tied to mine. She frowns, glances at the collar, and looks back at you, makes a circle with her hands, and puts her hand over her eyes and squints. She nods at you, then lowers her hand from her eyes and shakes her head, draws a slow line between you. You're looking for someone else. Fine, I can't help. She studies you again, then her expression softens slightly. She shakes her head slowly and gives a silent sigh. She nods at you, then raises an eyebrow and nods at the door. All right, come with me. Christine glances at your father, shakes her head, points at you, her, and nods in the direction of the fountain. Okay. Christine stops, glances at your collar, and then glances at your collar, frowning. It's a decayed speaker. If we stay too long near one, it'll go off. She taps the collar and opens and closes her hand really fast. She taps her collar and then opens and closes her hand really fast. She points at your pit boy, her collar, and then your and then your collar. After this, she closes and opens her hands slower. So you can interfere with the speaker's detonation frequency somehow, or possibly you can dampen the signal somehow. She about to nod, then stops and points at herself and shakes her head. She points at your collar, then hers, and nods at your pit boy. She makes a triangle motion, the same slow pulse, with her fingers. Does that work on any other collar? She frowns and shakes her head. And she opens her mouth and makes a motion tuning a dial and points at herself. It's just your frequency. Yes. But only between us. She nods and motions for you to go ahead. Well now, if it isn't... Dean, go back. Christine, wait. Christine, wait. Christine, wait. Christine, wait. Uh, we should travel together. Okay. Christine is giving you the signal interference perk. This perk grants you a short period of time near a speaker before the bomb collar starts to activate, as well as increasing the amount of time before your bomb collar detonates by 50%. That's a huge amount of time. Christine raises an eyebrow. Those facial scars weren't done by an auto dock, but the throat scar was. She nods slowly, then puts a hand in front of her throat, then closes it slowly, then points at you. I can't restore your voice. We need a real autodoc to do that. She shivers slightly and shakes her head. I don't understand why they shaved you bald. She looks blankly at you, then touches her head, smiles, and shakes her head. The autodoc didn't shave you bald? She waves her hand, then shakes her head. She nods in the direction of the casino. She was just bald already. You were bald before. <laughs> she nods with an exasperated look that makes a circle with her hands and repeats it twice more Then raises her hands and waves them like wings. She puts both hands in front of her that makes a motion with her hands as if writing something. You're a Brotherhood of Steel scribe? Okay. Okay. How did you get here? She points to you and shrugs. Where were you? Where were you before? Moves a finger in a wider circle, then raises a hand over her eyes. You were looking for something? Or someone? Someone. A man? She makes a motion with her hands around her chin, drawing it down, then raises her hands and clenches them at the sky. An angry, bearded man. She points at your pit boy. You're looking... for Elijah. Someone's smart. And... nuts. <laughs> Sounds pretty important you find him. She frowns, she raises two fingers, and has them walk together. She looks down at the two fingers, and her face becomes angry. She chops her hand down and draws the two fingers apart. One of the fingers she points at herself. 
he cut you off from someone. You were with someone and then he took you. Family? Husband? No, not a husband. Oh. Girlfriend. Lovers. Or girlfriend. You don't think I understand love? Just because I kill people doesn't mean I don't understand what love is, Christine. I know how important a loved one can be. Of course I do. I have a wife. I have a wife. I love my wife. I know how important it is. She studies you and she needs to be gauging you again. She makes a slow circle motion after a moment and taps her wrist. We're running out of time. All right, let's go, Christine. Christine is a very cool character. Booga booga. I am running out of ammo. I, oh no I'm not. Okay. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Christine, do you want a gun? Oh, Jesus. No more public housing. Christine, here, take some stuff. I'll give you a shotgun. I'll give you all these throwing spears. I'll give you two of these pistols. I'll give you a couple of these. I'll give you a couple of these. Hmm, no, I want the demolition charge. Uh, here, take one of these automatic. Take both of those automatic rifles. Take these, these, and these, and uh, you know those, and this. And, uh, why not those? You good? Okay. <laughs> oh. You're dead. Okay, where do I go from here? Around. There's a speaker up there? Hold on. Up there. There we go. See, there was a note there. Good job, uh, Dean, or whoever did that. I am just making it easier for other people to get around if I died. But you know what? If I died in here, it's my own fault. I, Jesus, Christine. I deserved if I died in here. Like, you're pale, dude. You're, you're like a ghost. Can I put something on you? Flash is gonna be funny. I guess Christine's not going to wear Benny's suit. Okay. First recon beret, sunglasses. This is what Ringo's fit is this time. At least for this portion of DLC. Ooh, leave that guy alone. Goodbye. I did not mean to hit Christine. Woo! You never have anything I need. 
But I mean, I guess they don't need anything either. That's, I mean, they're ghost people. No, I don't have a lot of ammo for that. I have two slugs. I have 35 bulk ammo for this. Uh, okay. There we go. All right, Elijah. I am so close, but it is almost 1 a.m. Um, how am I supposed to get to the markers on my map? Okay, Puesta del Sol and Salida del Sol. You barely held my hand anyway. <sighs> what is the Gallo then? The real work begins. What do you mean? Was this a warm up? Perhaps you think this is a simple robbery, a cheap casino heist. No, this is a heist of the centuries. We're not plundering Sierra Madre. We're plundering history, taken from the old world itself. It won't let this it isn't about easily. riches. This is about ancient technology. Else. This is pure. Locked away technology. I suggest taking the FEV reject to his position first. Although you may need his brutality and strength elsewhere first. As no, I'm fine. The, was the outlying areas of the villa are far more dangerous, thickened with the ghosts, traps, and toxins. Mm. Use your team as I use you. Listen to your caller. Watch where you step. You are no use to be dead. <sighs> All right. Well, I think uh, actually it's almost one in the morning for me. Father Elijah being a bitch and a whore. This is what this DLC is about. We haven't even touched on the other effects that Father Elijah has had across the rest of the Mojave yet. We've barely scratched the surface. We hardly know who he is. And we do know that Veronica was looking for him. Or at least I know that. So there was more than one person looking for Father Elijah. Not just in the Brotherhood of Steel, but elsewhere. And what else? would bring a man fame and fortune and the love of his compatriots again if he was correct. And this place was incredible. They never live it down. Right? Might be able to rip the pit boy off his arm without killing him. Dog, shut up. Okay, anyway, we're we're gonna we're gonna save it here. Um thank you for tuning into the sandwich experience and I very much appreciate it. Um it It's been it's been quite a game so far. We're gonna be doing more later. And still you're gonna understand more about Father Elijah as we continue to see him do his nonsense as time continues to go on. So 
with that, I guess I'll find somebody to go and raid out to. We could go hang out with Hogard. I had a good stream. Of course I had a good stream, BB. Of course I did. I played New Vegas and cooked a sandwich. So That's like the most... Has put on your favorite. Granny creams, hot butter, ice cream. Take Granny's... Mouth. We call it heat and sip. Very tasty and healthy too. My dick's cream. <laughs> Honey, you mean huh. I do mean huh. Who can we read out to? Thank you, Steel, for uh, late night surprises and right night cries. We can go hang out with um. Let's go hang out. Shadow Revenant. They're playing Dragon Age Origins, and while that is, it's it's of a similar pedigree because it's supposed to be a Bioware. Um, so we're gonna do that. I think that'll be fun. Uh, we're gonna get our raid message ready. We're gonna raid out in a little bit. Right over here. Thank you for tuning into the Sandwich Experience tonight. I very much appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna be back uh, maybe tomorrow because my wife's not gonna be home. I might do something on stream tomorrow, especially since I'm gonna have to play something weird on stream next, and I guess we can figure out what that's gonna be maybe tomorrow. Uh, on Thursday, we're playing Final Fantasy XIV. I am, my wife is still gonna be away, so I am going to be doing, I believe, the last Hildebrand quest uh, of the the, the Hand, Hildebrand Manderville quest line in 14. We're going to be doing that. I'm voice acting it, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, I'm also doing that. Uh, and then on Friday, I am playing Destiny 2 with It's Drizzle 007 and Blue Wanderer 748. Uh, the two great two greatest little, little, little boys I know. Um, we're hanging out. We're having a good time. Thank you for being here. If you have not followed and you'd love to follow, please follow. Uh, it's a great way to help me out, and you get to see more nonsense like this. I, I speak from the heart about these games. I had a great conversation about Dog and God earlier and uh, what a pit boy means in like terms of protagonist forced upon kind of thing uh with with we, we touched on that stuff you were there for it we'll see you later as a friend of mine once said quoting a movie ossels on you don't get any on you and uh commit to the bit and the bit will set you free we'll see you later uh i love you eat a sandwich for me Bye bye